Hi, and welcome to AP Psychology. This is Ms. Haya Gamo, and I will be teaching you this course. So why study AP Psychology? You get to have the opportunity to earn college credit based on your AP score. You get to demonstrate to college admission officers that you have a greater potential for academic success in college than non-AP students. In this course, you are introduced to the systematic and scientific study of human behavior and mental processes. You learn all about the psychologists and the studies that have shaped the field. You get to explore and apply psychological theories, key concepts and phenomena associated with topics that are what we're learning in our nine units, the biological basis of behavior, sensation and perception, learning and cognition, motivation, developmental psychology, testing and individual differences, treatments of psychological disorders, and last, social psychology. You get to employ psychological research methods, which we learn in Unit 1, including ethical considerations as you use scientific method to evaluate claims, evidence, and effectively communicate ideas. The skills that you would develop during this course are three main categories. First, concept understanding, where you define, explain, and apply concepts, behavior, theories, and perspectives. Basically, it entails to define or apply concepts, and there are so many concepts, terms, and definitions that we will first learn them, define them, and then we have to apply them to scenarios, uh, mainly as we learn how to solve free response questions. We would explain behavior in authentic context and we would apply theories that we learn and perspectives in authentic contexts, in scenario settings, in um, experiments and research examples. In the second skill category, which we will learn mainly in Unit 1, is data analysis, where we analyze and interpret quantitative data and the third skill category is scientific investigation, which is spread out throughout the nine units where we analyze psychological research studies. As you can see, these skills are color-coded. Most of it throughout the units that we're learning are in pink color, which is the first skill. Uh, as mainly we have so many terminologies that we need to define and apply in authentic contexts uh, a skill that we will definitely learn and use a lot as we solve free response questions the first unit is scientific foundations of psychology where we introduce psychology the history of psychology and we learn about research methods and here we introduce the second skill quantitative analysis and we learn how to um, the different types of research methods we focus so much on the experimental methods and we learn statistical analysis as well so that's basically the second and the third skill sorry and um, the ethical guidelines when we do any scientific research the unit, second unit is mainly biology because we're looking at the biological perspective of explaining behavior and mental processes. And those who are uh, in love with biology are going to very much uh, adore this unit. And then in the third unit, there is also some biology as we learn about anatomy of different senses. But then we move to psychology when we talk about perception. So we're looking at sensation perception. And then there is more, and then we move from the fourth unit onward to more psychology. So we learn um, about learning, <laughs> um, how we acquire learning. So the introduction to learning, there's different types of learning, classical conditioning, operant, and then the social cognitive factors in, in learning. So that's a very short unit. Um, the fifth unit is cognitive psychology, and that's all about the mind. So memory, um, how we acquire information, store it, retrieve it, why we forget, memory distortion, and then biological basis of memory. And we learn about thinking, problem solving, and uh, biases and errors in thinking, intelligence, intelligence testing. We have psychometric tests, intelligence testing, and language and how we acquire language. In the sixth unit, we're looking at developmental psychology, how we develop. So basically, there are certain psychologists they focus in, uh, or, and, and specialize in developmental psychology. They develop throughout the life 
span uh, from childhood uh, to adulthood. And we're looking at social development, physical development, cognitive development, and emotional development. Looking at the childhood development, uh, and then we adolescence, and we're looking at adulthood and aging, and we're looking also into moral development, and then the last one, a little bit about gender and sexual orientation. In the seventh unit, we're looking at motivation, emotion, and personality. So mainly theories here, we're looking at theories of motivation, what motivates us, and certain theories that have been developed by main psychologists and researchers in the field, theories of emotion, stress, and coping with stress, and theories on that. We're looking at personality, and there's theories of personality and uh, psychoanalytic, based uh, on, on psychoanalytic perspective. There's the behaviors, behavioral perspective on, on personality, social cognitive perspective, the humanistic theories on personality. So these are different perspectives in psychology, and we're going to tackle the topic of personality from different perspectives, the trait theories of personality, and then uh, we end with measuring personality. And then we move to Unit 8, which is very interesting, clinical psychology, where we're looking at um, psychological disorders and treatment of psychological disorders. So we start with introduction, and then we're looking at the uh, psychological perspectives and etiology of, of disorders. And then we move to neurodevelopmental, schizophrenic, uh, schizophrenia, basically, we call it schizophrenic spectrum disorders, and there are types. So this is how they are um, categorized in the DSM uh, uh, manual for psychological disorders. Bipolar, uh, the depressive anxiety and uh, OCD and related disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders. We're looking at traumatic, so trauma, stressor related, dissociative uh, disorders. Um, somatic symptom and related disorders, looking at eating and feeding disorders, substance use as disorders, addictive, so alcohol addiction, for example, personality disorders, and then we're, we move into treatment of disorders. And the treatment, now disorders are, are categorized based on, um, based on symptoms, but the treatments will be different based on different perspectives. Um, so we're looking at the treatments from the psychological uh, perspectives, different psychological perspectives that we, we are going to be introducing at the beginning of the course, and the evaluating the strengths and weaknesses and, uh, of, of different treatments. The last thing is very interesting, social psychology. In social psychology, we look at different theories first, attribution theory, um, attitude formation, attitude change, Conformity, how we conform, comply, obedience, and different experiments and research have been done on the, in that area. And you see they're color coded um, brown because there are certain important studies and some ethical considerations behind these studies. Uh, we're looking at group influences in, in, on behavior, mental processes, bias, prejudice, and discrimination, and the con these concepts we're going to learn about them. Um, altruism and, and, and aggression and interpersonal attraction. You see very interesting topics to learn about. The main textbooks that we're going to use, there is the uh, AM School Psychology, so this is based on the AP course description. There is Barron's as well, we, uh, the textbook, we have it as a textbook, of course, and then the Barron's, there's a PDF version of it available for you. Myers also, uh, this is a very important um, textbook that we ha you have it available as a PDF. It's, it's a huge textbook, but um, it's, uh, it's developed for the AP course. And there's uh, uh, also slides based on Myers. So that's basically the, the uh, uh, let's say the revision uh, or um, the summarized version of the book. So you can also look at the slides that are also going to be available for you. On a daily basis, we'll be using AP Classroom uh, for AP Psychology. And um, there's a YouTube uh, channel by uh, Advanced Placement um, for, for uh, videos, uh, review videos, and uh, for answering your response questions. And there's plenty of um, AP endorsed websites and um, my own personal um, um, recommendations of, of YouTube channels that you can follow and watch uh, that are that follow the AP curriculum. How AP exams are scored. While multiple choice questions are scored by the machine, of course, 
The fear response questions are scored by thousands of college, faculty, and expert AP teachers. Now, the scores on the fear response questions and performance assessment are weighted and combined with the results of the computer scored multiple choice questions. And then this row score is converted to a composite AP score that you get from a one to five scale. You need to remember that AP scored are not norm reference or graded on a curve. Instead, they are criterion reference, which means that for you, if you meet the criteria of an AP score of two, three, four, or five, you will receive that score no matter how many students that is. To interpret the AP scores, which range from one to five, of course, five being the highest and one the lowest, Five means extremely well qualified and it's a solid A. Four would range from A minus to B based on a high four or a low four and it's well qualified. Three would be qualified and ranges from B minus to C. Two is possibly qualified and one is no recommendation. To receive college credit, some universities would accept a three, others would require either a four or a five. Now, how you receive the, uh, the score from one to five is based on a score range that is calculated uh, based on the weighted score on the two sections, the multiple choice and the free response. Each question on the multiple choice, you've got 100 multiple choice questions. Each one has one point, um, whereas the free response, you've got two, and they both have the same weight. Um, and then they are added together to receive the, the total score, which we have the ranges here. As you can see, there's a, a, a quite a good range to receive a five. Um, now, the ranges, they vary a little bit every year from a year, but I'm just giving you a, a, an example to see the ranges for a three, four, and a five, and they change only slightly from one year to the next. The exam date for this 2024 year is Thursday, May 9th. The exam format includes two sections, the multiple choice section, which is 100 questions. It's one hour and 10 minutes, and that's 66.7% of your exam score, so that's two thirds. You define and explain contents from the range of course concepts across the nine units, where you apply skills of concept application, data analysis, and scientific investigation, all three skills that we talked about before. The second section is the free response. You've got two questions, and you have 50 minutes to answer them, and that's 33.3% of your exam score, so that's one-third. You've got uh, two types of questions, uh, the concept application and the uh, research methods. The, uh, the requirements is basically to explain behavior and apply theories using concepts from different theoretical frameworks or subdomains in the field, and to analyze psychological research studies using, uh, including analyzing and interpreting quantitative data. So that's the concept application and the research method. Um, two types that we will be practicing quite often throughout the year. Thank you, and I'm looking forward for our journey together and a successful academic year.